Welcome to Upon Late DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. It's First Friday, hosted by my sweet friends Lisa of Our Grey House and Sarah of Jujube DIY. This month's guest host is another sweet friend, Christine of DIY Craftaholic. Our theme for April is Craft Your Stash. I have some beautiful stash thanks to Gravy. I'm making a couple of mini clipboards. Let's get into it. DIY 1 Fairy Garden. I'll start by painting this 6x5 wood plaque with folk art aloe. Such a fresh spring green. Really pretty. I want to age this a bit, so I'm using Joe Sonia wood gel stain in fruit wood. I'll focus the stain along the perimeter. The inside will be covered with paper, so it's not really necessary to stain it. There we go. So I've picked out some adorable paper and ephemera from my Gravy Scrapbook subscription box. I thought this butterfly paper was the perfect background for my fairy garden. And I have Sweet Wee Fairies stickers, some leash trim stickers. I don't know, maybe I'll use some leaf stamps. And we have a binder clip. This is a fun little stationary gadget. And I'll also add some text and some flowers as well. I'll ink the edge of my butterfly paper with vintage photograph distressing ink. It already has an aged appearance, but I want to really reinforce that. I don't think that I mentioned that I ripped the edges of the paper to give it a deckled finish. I had stamped out my message onto white cardstock. I tore around the words, and I'm going to hit those with my ink toe, and then I'll repeat the process with black ink. So for this one, I'm using my glue stick to adhere the butterfly paper to the board. And then once I get it on there, I'll roll over it with my brayer, just to make sure there's good contact and adhesion. Before I do anything else, I'm going to dry fit my elements. For me, this is an absolutely necessary step, because I'll see it one way in my mind's eye, and then as I'm laying everything out, I'm like, well, you know, that's clearly not going to work. So, it's good practice. There we go. I think that'll work. I'm adding these lace stickers to the sides, but I'll need to trim them a wee bit to fit the space. I'm just cutting the clear part off. It's a little wide for that area. There's a little overhang right there on the end, so I'm just going to clip that off too. Now we can add the stickers. I've got them where I want them, so I'm just going to peel and stick. These are the sweetest little fairies. I love them. These two sitting down, they're precious. They're so stinking cute. I'm using my glue stick for the text. It says, when the wind blows, a fairy is near. I'm placing them strategically so they don't cover all of that big butterfly. And then I'm going to run over them again with my brayer. I peeled up the top fairy because I wanted to add some of these leaf stamps. Luckily, she came up easily and is still sticky, so I can add her back after. This stamp pad came in my gravy box. I thought it was black, but it's actually a rich, deep forest green. It's really pretty. So I'm going to stamp up here in the corner where the fairy was. And I'll fill in some of the negative space with the leaf or two. And then we'll put the fairy back. I was so happy that she was so easily stuck back on. Cool. I'm going to hot glue some mini flowers in the bottom corners. It's always fun to add a 3D element or two. Know what I mean? I think some rosebuds would be sweet alongside the open flowers. These flowers I've had in my stash for years, so these are not part of the gravy box. And some dried buds here. They can hang over the edge a wee bit. That's cute. I added the clip at the top to give it that clipboard look. I love it. 
I'll be placing this next to my vintage typewriter on my mantelpiece. Hope you like it too. DIY 2. Coffee time. I'm painting this plaque Americana Oyster Beige. It's really only slightly darker than the wood, but it has a really nice vintage flavor to it. We'll use the Josonia Fruit Wood Gel Stain again, same as before, around the perimeter. You know, I'm looking at this and thinking how much this actually has a coffee color when it's applied over the Oyster Beige. Perfect. I mean, look at that. That looks like a coffee stain. I have a Dollar Tree wood cut out of a coffee cup, so I'll paint in the whipped cream with white acrylic paint. Well, this could be a hot chocolate, but for our purposes, it's coffee. I'm adding a wee bit of an arch with the paint there, you know, so it looks more like the opening to a mug. I'll use some folk art floating medium and oyster beige to add some fluffy details to the whipped cream. I prep my brush with the floating medium, then side load with the paint, working it into the bristles by stroking it on my plate. And now I'll just follow around the shape of the cream, pulling the brush across to mimic foamy layers. You know, it's, it's very quick. I'm just laying in that shading. I'll drop the link to my shading video in case you want more detail. It'll be in the description box. It goes into more depth. That looks good. This is a bit of scrap harlequin paper that I'll cover my cup with. This isn't from my gravy box either. This was from a variety pack that a friend gave me. I want this to have an arch where the rim of the cup is. So I'm going to trace the cup onto the paper and pencil in the arch. Now I'll cut along that curve. Yep, that'll work. I'll ink up that edge with both vintage photograph and black. You know the deal. I apply Mod Podge to the wood and to the back of the paper. And what I'm going to do is align the cup with the tracing on the back of the paper so that that curve lands where it should on the front of the cup. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. And now I'll add a top coat. While the Mod Podge is wet, I'm pulling away the excess paper. It comes away very easily because the paper's so thin. And then I'm going to poke a hole where the handle is and uh, pull that away too. I just use my nail to poke the hole. Once it's dry, I ink the edges. Just like before, I dry fit my elements. And these are all from my gravy box. Cute little sticker tags. I stamped the four on that wee tag. Isn't that cute? This is just a scrap bit of lace uh, sticker that I had left over from another project. And I stamped the word coffee onto this tape. And I chose a clock face because the clipboard will say time for coffee. And we have a wee vintage advert sticker. This piece here, this was actually the inspiration for the theme with the wee coffee ring. I thought that was adorable. And the background paper is this vintage recipe page for chocolate icing. I tore the edges for the deco effect on this too. Right, so I'm going to ink the board and all of the paper pieces with both inks. And you know, I just do it till it looks good to my eye. Just finishing up the recipe page. And I'm going to stamp the word time on this wee tag that will go across the clock face. This time I'm going to use Mod Podge to attach my backing paper to the board. We'll get it centered and roll over it with the brayer. Let's add all the ephemera, starting with our vintage advert sticker. I found these stamps amongst my stash. They're supposed to be flowers, but they remind me of a coffee ring, so I'm going to utilize them for that purpose. I'll add one down here, too. 
Mod Podging the clock into place. We'll add the tag that says time. The tags are stickers, so no Mod Podge is necessary. Now our coaster with the coffee ring. I'm going to put that down here. I want the ring to show. There we go. Yeah, that's good. I like it there. Let's hot glue the cup into place. Add the cute wee number four tag to our cup. Time for coffee. This tape is cool. It's almost like a packing tape, like a paper packing tape, but it's got script on it and I just stamped on the word coffee. I'm gonna stick that scrap bit of lace sticker here by the stamp. I'll use the vintage photograph to stamp on the word thanks because we have good manners. That thanks stamp is just part of my stash. Let's add another of those stamps that looks like coffee rings. This one is bigger. Cute. Now let's add our doodads and bits and bops. I picked out some cute coordinating buttons and some pitberry clusters, and some loose pitberries that look like coffee beans. So once I get everything dry fitted, then I'll go back and hot glue them in place. This is an adorable gingham checked vintage button. Found this in my stash. Love it. In fact, all the buttons I'm using here are vintage. When I'm cleaning out my closet and decide that something's not really good enough to donate, if there's buttons, I cut them off. Keep them. Because they come in really handy for projects like this. I'll glue on my Pitberry coffee beans. I'm doing three on this side of the cup, and I'll do three on the other side. Pitberry cluster up there in the corner. And one down here. Here's our other coffee beans. Adding another coffee ring circle up there. Now this button is really old. And this one kind of looks like a cat's eye. It's really cool. And now we just need the clip. You guys, I'm really digging this one. How cute is that? Perfect for your coffee bar. Love it. Hope you like it too. Here's a final look at both of our clipboards. Let me know which one's your favorite. With a few exceptions, everything was from a gravy box. So if you're interested in that, I will drop a link and also a discount code for you in a pinned comment and also in the description box. Thanks to Lisa and Sarah for hosting and to Christine for guest hosting. Links to their channels are in the description box as well. And also a link for the playlist. Please be sure to check it out and show everyone some love. I'll also drop the link to my floating tutorial in the description box, just in case you want to see that in more detail. Look at those pretty fairies. I love making mixed media items. There's always so much to see, and it's just so fun to pick out all the different little elements that you want to include in your theme. Really relaxing and just a lot of fun. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.